Good afternoon. I am absolutely thrilled to welcome all of you to our inaugural Real Solutions Summit. I'm Erica Schoeder. I'm the executive director at Our Street. And before we begin, I want to take a moment to recognize Our Street's board chair, Susanna Dockypil. And a shout out to our exceedingly generous gold sponsors, Unite America and Google. At Our Street, we believe that driving informed conversations is one of the most important things that we can do. Events like this summit are opportunities for us to bring our evidence to bear on some port important thorny public policy problems, but also to bring you all together to engage your evidence and your perspectives in order to build better ideas together. I think that sounds like a great tagline, so feel free to steal it. Now, all of this engaging with one another and hashing out real solutions takes a fair amount of trust. And trust, as we know, is in limited supply today. I know I don't have to convince this crowd that lack of trust is a real problem in our society. We all read the studies. We all see the polling data, but we can also feel how lack of trust has infiltrated not just our political discourse, but our individual relationships. Evidence of lack of trust is all around us and particularly alarming for our American democracy is waning trust in institutions from civil society to Congress, distrust in elections and in the political process itself, lack of trust in experts and the very notion of expertise. Now, I think we can all agree that democratic societies need trust. And having a functioning democracy is essential for making public policy change. So if we here in this room aren't addressing this disintegration of trust, we are missing the forest for the trees. Now, this wouldn't be an R Street affair if we didn't have some real solutions. So here goes. The key to rebuilding trust lies in the three C's, credibility, conflict, and collaboration. So let me first start with credibility. In order to be worthy of trust, we need to behave credibly. Sounds easy. But behaving credibly means that we cannot pretend to be disinterested observers in the political process. We are human beings. We have a vested interest in the outcomes here. We all, each and every one of us, have a vision for a better future. Behaving credibly means that we are forthright about all of the various pressures and forces that have shaped our perspective. We need to acknowledge our ideologies, our principles, our values, our experiences. We need to put them on the table. We need to talk about them. But we can go further. We need to acknowledge the complexity of the work that we do and the challenges that we face. So most of you know our street quite well, and you know that we are very good at leveraging complexity. The policy areas that we enter require deep expertise, and we approach these complex challenges not as fundamentalists, but as pragmatists. And to stay true to our mission, 
and ensure our solutions are fit for the real world, we have to navigate some serious tensions. So just to name a few, um, we have on the one hand to retain our independent policy agendas, all the while trying to inspire and inform and influence political actors. We need to build a veritable internal uh, arsenal of internal controls around our research independence, all, all the while being nimble enough to, to impact the, the policy environment in real time. We need to herald our impact and our successes in order to secure funding, all the while understanding and acknowledging that success is interdependent and very hard to measure. And finally, we need to nurture our internal viewpoint diversity in order to create challenges and test our ideas and make them stronger, all the while staying cohesive around a single unified mission of free markets and limited effective government. Now these aren't easy tensions to navigate and harder yet is finding ways to be open and honest and transparent about them. But in order to behave credibly, we all need to communicate the complexity of the work that we do. So no problem, piece of cake, right? <laughs> On to the second C. This is the hard part, conflict. We need to be comfortable in conflict with one another. So everyone has a natural default setting when it comes to conflict, and it can be context and situation dependent. I know that when I am at home in Iowa with my five siblings, we have a very high tolerance for conflict. We're a lively bunch. But when I'm here in DC with a, friend, a group of friends, um, I'm the one checking in to make sure that everyone is calm and comfortable and happy. But outside of these trust-filled groups, we often have a really hard time finding just the right balance of conflict. This can lead to false consensus on one end of the spectrum, and it can lead to unproductive, high conflict on the other. So false consensus, too little conflict, and we start to self-censor. If you can't talk about ideas, you can't properly think about them. And this can happen under the best of circumstances, the best of intentions. It's often just easier to avoid conflict. But when we avoid conflict, our good ideas don't make it on the agenda. Now conversely, you have too much conflict, and conflict is, instead of about ideas, it's personal. It's about people, and it's about identity. It's us versus them. It's all-consuming, and it's harmful. So using a Buddhist analogy, it's like a whole bunch of people throwing hot coals with bare hands. Everyone gets burned. So both false consensus on the one end of the spectrum and high conflict on the other destroy trust. Now, at R Street, we have developed and reinforced norms to try to keep people right in the sweet spot of that conflict continuum. Now, we aren't always perfect. We don't always get it, work, get it right. Uh, but disagreeing is hard work. It can be uncomfortable. It can be heated. And it can be passionate. But putting in this effort is entirely worth it because at the end of the day, constructive conflict not only makes our organization stronger, it makes our public policy solutions stronger. So now what? We have to go further, beyond credibility, beyond conflict, to collaboration. But we can't do this alone. We need to collaborate, and, it, and we need to collaborate with people 
who disagree with us. Everyone in this room knows it can be difficult to work with people who have different values, who have fundamentally different visions of the world, who have different viewpoints. But if we are going to build better ideas together, we need to collaborate, and not just with the usual suspects. We need to collaborate with people who challenge us. Now, broad collaboration is one of our core operating principles at R Street. And as many of you know, who have been part of these collaborations, we can bring together some strange bedfellows. And I'm, I'm definitely not saying you in this room are strange. Um, but our approach to these strange bedfellow collaborations enables us to build understanding and momentum across civil society, industry, academia, within government, with people who might have completely disparate missions and viewpoints, but we can come together on a single issue or a single subset of a single issue, and we can find areas of agreement, we can hash out a solution, and we can work together to influence good public policy. So this is just one way we can all build trust, trust that is not in a tribe, not trust in a political ideology, but trust that we, as individuals and experts with our own biases and perspectives, can come together in good faith and build better ideas together. Building trust, I believe that this is our role in strengthening American democracy today. Trust that is predicated on credibility, conflict, and collaboration. Now, as we dive into our panel discussions, I want you to take the three C's with you. And if you disagree with me on anything that I've said today, please come find me, because I would love to hear your perspective. <laughs> <laughs>